Recently, Mia McCormick and I reviewed the amazing full-frame 24.3 megapixel Sony Alpha A7 mirrorless camera. In that review, I mentioned there's also an A7R. Let's take a look at this 36.4 megapixel alternative. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. So the Sony Alpha A7 and the A7R are both full-frame mirrorless cameras. Having a great full-frame sensor in a modern, lightweight mirrorless body sure has its appeal. It really is small and light for a full-frame sensor. The A7R with a battery and this 28 to 70 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 lens only weighs one pound 11 ounces. And since Sony gives us a 24.3 megapixel option with the A7 and a 36.4 megapixel option with the A7R, I think it would be helpful to understand the difference. The vast majority of A7 and A7R features are the same. In fact, the bodies look identical and all the buttons and dials are the same too. These weatherproof bodies are identical twins. The tilting 3-inch LCD and the really impressive electronic viewfinder are identical as well. The main difference is performance. By performance, I mean the speed of various functions and image capture quality. The A7R is a 36.4 megapixel sensor, and that means that you'll be hard pressed to find any full frame sensor with more resolution. You'll need to start looking at medium format cameras to get more image data in your frame. So, who can leverage that kind of extra megapixel data? Well, landscape photographers will love it. Some portrait photographers might appreciate the extra megapixels. Wildlife photographers might appreciate it. Commercial photographers who primarily work with products in studio. Architectural or real estate photographers will benefit. And of course, hobbyists will just have fun with all that extra resolution. But, regardless of your subject, You'll want to be using detailed information in your final image to really take advantage of those extra megapixels. That means that large prints or cropped images that take advantage of the extra data are ideal. It's almost pointless to use this camera for images that you'll be showing on the web or a tablet or a smartphone. Now, did you notice how I said some portrait artists and some wildlife photographers? And did you notice how I left sports shooters out altogether? The reason it's not a great camera for everybody in all of those situations is because the camera capture performance isn't as fast as they would need. For instance, the 24.3 megapixel A7 has a flash sync speed of 1 250th of a second, but the A7R's flash sync speed drops to 1 160th of a second. And while the high speed burst rate on both cameras is four or five frames a second, that higher speed burst on either camera doesn't update the focus and exposure when you're using the speed priority burst rate for capture. Even at the lower speed burst rate of 1.5 frames a second, I didn't have a lot of success with the A7R refocusing during a burst of shots. This is definitely not an action camera. But let's get back to the kinds of things it does really well. Detail. Large images with lots of detail. The FE 28-70mm f3.5-5.6 to OSS lens did a great job with some handheld images I shot of stuff while walking around the office. I was able to nail some shallow depth of field shots of some flowers and the color and detail were everything I could have hoped for. Then, with the impressive Sonar T-Star 55mm f1.8 ZA lens, you've got incredible shallow depth of field potential and great lens performance. If you're shooting a model or something else that isn't moving much, this is a great camera and lens combination. More than just megapixels, the sensor also has no optical low-pass filter. This is also called an anti-aliasing filter. And that means that you'll be getting even more detail and sharpness at the pixel level. I usually shoot RAW plus JPEG with any camera. And when I'm shooting artistic images or detailed architectural or landscape images, I definitely shoot camera RAW so that I can squeeze every bit of information out of the camera possible. The colors with the A7R 
and the shadow detail were really great. If you're really into camera technology, you'll appreciate this. Consider that Sony is packing an extra 12.1 megapixels in the same full frame sensor area as the a7. Now, I'm not a camera engineer, so I wouldn't have thought about any of the problems that might come up with how light lands on those extra megapixels, or how the E-mount's short flange back distance might cause issues with the angle that light hits the sensor. But Sony engineers did. With the a7R, they've optimized the design and positioning of the sensor's on-chip lens to minimize problems. Maybe if I did lab-style camera reviews, I could show you some shots of test patterns that might illustrate this, but there's no lab involved with my review, so I'll just tell you, this camera captures great, sharp images, edge-to-edge -edge with every lens I tested. And I even used a Metabones Canon EF to E-mount converter to try out some good Canon glass I had on hand. The images are great. I've seen some comparisons between the a7 and the a7R that suggest that the high ISO performance is slightly better with the a7, but I didn't really see that. Besides, if you post-process with Camera Raw software like Lightroom, and then you scale that 36.4 megapixel image down to the same size as the a7 captures, it's going to have more detail and it's going to be sharper. There are a couple of other differences that you'll notice in a side-by-side -side comparison of these two cameras. The a7R focuses more slowly. I really notice this in low-light situations. Now that's because the a7 has phase detection and contrast detection autofocus, and the a7R only has contrast detection autofocus. I wouldn't call it slow, but it's just not as fast as the a7 was. Outside during the day, though, focus performance seemed pretty similar. The other thing is the shutter noise. The a7R doesn't have an electronic first curtain shutter, so the shutter sound is a bit noisier. Video performance is the same. Available resolutions, frame rates, and file types are all the same. So if you're mainly interested in video, you won't really need the a7R over the a7. I really like the a7 and the a7R, and I encourage you to check out the a7 review that I did with Mia McCormick for a good, solid overview of features that apply to both of these cameras. I just wish I had the a7R with me when I went on one of my trips out west where they make all those amazing landscapes. Now, don't get me wrong, it's beautiful where I live, and sunrises and sunsets are especially beautiful. But a camera like this a7R deserves to go with you on vacation so that you have big, beautiful memories when you get home. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, 7 day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.